The Roosters have had internal discussions about recruiting Knights and Maroons veteran Dane Gagai to fill a hole in the outside backs with Joey Manu and Joseph Swali both leaving at the end of the season. But the Tricolours' focus tonight is on the Melbourne Storm. Brad Fittler joins me now. Evening to you, Bradley. James. Always nice to see you ahead of a big occasion like this one tonight. James Tedesco returns for the Roosters mm. and Joey Manu goes back to the centres. Are you happy with that? Oh, I'm very happy. I think people have short memories. James Tedesco was their best player for the first three weeks. You know, Joey Marner is a great player, without, without doubt, and a great centre. So having them both in your side is a real luxury for the Roosters. Uh, there's a long list of players starting to put their hands up for origin selection for the mm. Blues. Another one of those is Ryan Pappenhausen. Gets the chance on a big stage tonight. Well, he's had his hand up for a long time. He's been part of the squad plenty of times. He's been injured uh, throughout a lot of origin series. He's speed. And what he brings also is this ability to support on the inside. He's not just one of those fullbacks that sweeps around. He's got a lot of tries off that play in particular on the inside, and the coach will be looking for that. We in for something special tonight? I think we are. There was a lot of rain earlier, but it mm. looks pretty good at the moment. All right, see you sideline. Thank you, Bradley. Right Brad Fittler joining us here as we count down. Off you go uh, to tonight's big match. Now the Panthers have arrived in Bathurst ahead of Saturday's clash with the Tigers still reeling from the news that James Fisher-Harris will leave the club at season's end. Definitely a bit sad. He's a um, huge piece of the puzzle. Um, obviously, yeah, great opportunity for him and his family. So, yeah, con congratulate him on that. But, yeah, obviously going to miss him. Players say the props move to the Warriors won't fully sink in until the end of the year. The Bulldogs concede they were once a disconnected team who didn't play for each other, but say that's all changed. Still sporting scars from last year's embarrassing defeat to the Knights, players hope to prove the club has turned the corner against Newcastle this Sunday. Cameron Serraldo arrived in Canterbury as one of the most hyped-up rookie coaches the game had seen, but things didn't quite go to plan. The lowest point of his first season in charge a 66-0 annihilation against the Knights. You don't really forget those moments and, you know, you don't forget the heartbreak, especially last year in general, the heartbreak that, you know, all of us boys went through. Seraldo was criticised for being too tough, but this year Bulldogs players have bought into the coach's hard training methods that worked when he was an assistant at Penrith. We're all playing for each other now and it's just we seem really connected, which is... You know, which hasn't happened in the last couple of years. Cronulla currently leads the NRL for the first time since the Sharks' last premiership year. It was 2016, was it? Yeah. You know what happened that year? Yeah, I do. But that was eight years ago now, so eventually eight years down the track, reporters will be talking about 2024 instead of 2016. On Sunday, they'll unleash speedster Sam Stone Street. I've been working for this my whole life, so um, I'm ready, so I'm going to take that step. The proud local junior today pinching himself as he inspired the next generation of junior jaws. My, pa my parents used to take me to the junior jaws. I actually remember chasing Andrew Fafita um, in a tag game and I couldn't catch him. The 21-year-old will debut on the wing, while Zach Lomax will suit up in the centres for the first time this season. After weeks of speculation, the Dragons signed a four-year deal with Parramatta from 2025 where he'll play in his preferred position. It hasn't really interrupted us bar the external noise. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to think that it's you know, put to bed now, so we'll just move on. Zach Bailey, Nine News. Today marks four weeks until kickoff in the Women's State of Origin series, which will be held over three matches for the first time. When it was two games, it was a bit upsetting. So now that it's three, I think it's a really good um, chance to really showcase our talent across three games and, yeah, just get that real origin vibe like the men's. The series kicks off at Suncorp Stadium before games in Newcastle and Townsville.